This is Darren Pulsford, Chief Solution Architect, author, and most importantly, your host. And welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, Leveraging Generative AI in College, with special guest and student of BYU-Idaho, Madeline Pulsifer. Madeline, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Hey, I, it's a pleasure having you on my show. You're not the first one of my kids to be on my show. I think you're the second. Matthew's been on the show. I think just Matthew and you. Wow. My two so, M's, Matthew so and Maddie. <laughs> there you go. Well, Madeline, before we get started in the topic today, which is generative AI in school, uh, specifically college, um, you started your own podcast. I, Tell my audience a little bit about you and your podcast, why you're doing it. And then we'll dive right into the subject today. Yeah, I just started uh, my own YouTube channel. It's called Maddie, spelled M-A-D-E-I, um, where I talk about mindful living and intentional living and my college education experience. Um, I just started it, so I'm really excited to be able to develop that more. All right, self-promotion there, way to go. <laughs> way to use your dad's podcast for self-promotion. Oh, yeah. All right, so... Let's dive, let's dive right into this because we're really talking about embracing generative AI. That is, that is the subject of, of the series that we're working through right now. Um, tell my audience a little bit about your journey with chat GPT. Did you use it? Cause you were a freshman this last semester, one semester down in college, way to go. Yep. Um, before you went to college, did you use chat GPT at all in high school? What was your experience with ChatGPT um, before you went to college? Um, well, to, uh, to be honest, it was, wasn't was really, like, I didn't really use it before college. Um, the only time I had used it was for silly things that my brother, I had seen my brothers use it for, like creating stories and things like that. So when I got to college, I realized I should be using this tool more. Um, but before that, I hadn't really used it at all just 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 for fun and games and things pretty like that pretty much <laughs> yeah your brothers are really great at using chat gpt to make up funny stories yes that's what they used it for very much so all right so i know we talked before you went to school i said madeline you got to you got to dive into this you got to mm -hmm. use it it's going to help you in school but what was your fear in using it my first fear was i mean not a lot of teachers or professors really accept it. I was scared I would honestly be pegged as cheating or um, I was scared it was the lazy way out of education. So did did any of your teachers have policies on using ChatGPT and what were they what were they like? They actually didn't. I just before this podcast I looked through all my old syllabuses <clears throat> and they didn't have anything on AI um, being used in the classroom or about the policy, just cheating policies, but that wasn't even mentioned. So, I mean, so did they bring it up in class at all on using ChatGPT as a no-no or generative AI? They didn't actually. Um, the only class that it was brought up in was my agriculture orientation class. And that class, um, it was, that class had people come in um, that were in the industry. And the only time it was mentioned when someone uh, mentioned that they use it in their everyday job. And my teacher kind of was a little hesitant that he said really? that. Really? Yeah. Really interesting. So the universities, not all of them have picked up on mm -hmm. how to use it. Or uh, do you think they're afraid too? Honestly, I think they they are. That's why they're not mentioning it at all. I think a lot of people know about ChatGPT and other AIs, but they're not mentioning it or discussing it. Interesting. Now, did did any of your roommates, because you you were room with uh, five other girls, right? Yeah. Right. All different. All different majors. All di I met them all. <laughs> they're they're darling. Um, but they were all over the place as far as majors mm -hmm. and background and and all that. So were they using generative AI? Have they heard about it? What was what was the thing there? Um, they honestly, I think I made some of them set up accounts with ChatGPT. 
Um, oh, look at you evangelizing generative AI. <laughs> I think I was the only one that actually used it um, and utilized it. Uh, no one else used it. Even my classmates, they didn't use it. I mean, I had a group project that I was like, why don't we ask ChatGPT for some ideas to like bounce off of? And they were really hesitant to use it. And I was like, it's a tool, not we're not cheating or anything. It's a tool that we're using. Okay, so it's a tool. We're not cheating. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, really? Do, would your professors say that it was okay that you used it? I used it right in front of my professors and they didn't say anything about it. Um, so I, I don't know because they never mentioned you know, can it. You use it. Can you use it to cheat? You definitely could use it to cheat, but I don't think you. All right, so what's, what's the difference? And I guess that's what I'm after. What's the difference between cheating and using it as a tool? So for example, cheating would just be putting in the instructions of an essay and having it spit something out and submitting that and doing nothing to it. Whereas a tool would be, hey, here's my outline, here's my subject, or not here's, here's my um, instructions, here's my subject, can you write an outline for me? And then you take that outline and you write an essay based off that outline. That's using it as a tool. Whereas, you know, cheating, having it submit things is, so you use it, you use it to help you get started in the process or guide you along. So you, that's how you use yeah. it as a tool. And, and you let your professors, some of your professors knew that you were doing this or none of them knew? I don't think any of them knew. I used it during class. So it wasn't like I was trying to hide it or anything. Um, okay. But I never brought it up with any of my professors. Asking so me. was it, is there a temptation? All right. You have to be honest. Is there a temptation when, oh, crud, I forgot this essay that was due tomorrow. It's 10 p.m. at night. It's due at midnight. I got two hours to whip out an essay. Is that temptation there? Oh, yeah, definitely. But the essays it spits out aren't going to be, um, you're not going to get a good grade on them. Oh, why not? I thought Chat GPT does, did great essays. It It's very, um, they use a lot of adjectives too much. It's too formal in writing. It's not human because, I mean, it's not. So you're not going to get good warrants or explanations on things as much as you would if you were doing it yourself. Now, I think you could write an essay in two hours with it, using it as a tool instead of asking it to spit something out for you. Uh, is that something you did? Uh, I used it as a tool. I never had it spit something out and I just submitted that. Okay. I'm glad to hear that because <laughs> your professors are going to listen to this podcast. Oh yeah. I'll send it to all of them. <laughs> send it to all of them. Okay. So an another quick, another quick question. Then we're going to dive into the different ways that you used it. Mm -hmm. What if the the university you're at, BYU is where you're at, um, what if they said no chat GPT, period, no generative AI at all, zero? Um, Would that be tough for you? I think so. And I don't think it's realistic because talking to professionals in industry, they use it themselves. And college is supposed to, especially at BYU-Idaho, they really prepare you for the workforce. And I would go to them and basically tell them that. Um, well, okay. You know, that's a great argument, right? Yeah. Hey, you're trying to prepare me for the workforce. The workforce uses this tool all the time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that, that, that's a good argument. So you would argue your case. Yeah. You, you like using it. It's, it's a valuable tool. For yeah. You. It's a tool and I could show them how I use it and maybe they should teach us how to use it. So kids aren't cheating with it. Uh, interesting. But there are going to be some kids that cheat. Yeah. Just with anything. But those kids have always cheated. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. All right. Ne next question. Let, let's talk about the different ways that you use it as a tool. All right. Because you said, oh, I just use it as a tool. But you, you uncovered some really interesting things that you did mm -hmm. uh, using chat GPT, both for school and also social. We'll talk about the social, social aspect of it, too. <laughs> Uh, which I think is really funny. Um, but let's first talk about 
give me kind of different scenarios on when you use chat GPT as a tool. Let's look at the different ways you can use it as, as a tool. So like I mentioned earlier, I used it as helping me write essays for, I would ask it to give me an outline and then I would take that outline and add to it and write an essay based off of that. Um, along with essays, I also helped it, it helped me write theses and jump ideas back so I could get a clear understanding about what I was writing about. Um, so you're using it as, as a, um, for the outlining, I think that's great. You can put the prompt in there and say, Hey, I need an outline that helps me Here are my ideas. I need an outline that helps me organize it. So that's pretty cool. And then the next thing you said was, um, the outline and then, um, oh, a thesis. So brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you, so tell me how that what that looks like. Does it give you a bunch of ideas that comes back, or what? What does that look like? So um, the way I would do it is, I mean, in one of my classes, we it was a group project that a, a specific situation where we had a question that we wanted to do, but we had to make it into a thesis that wasn't a question. So I just put the question in there and I asked, "Can you give me ideas for a thesis or um, like zoning in on this topic?" and it could give you one idea or you could ask it for a list of ideas. Just ask oh, it what cool. you want from it. And then you can, and then that gets your own brain going. Is that what you typically saw? Yeah. And me and my group, we didn't take exactly what ChatGPT said. We took multiple ideas that it gave and we created a thesis. See, it's, all right. So good. So, um, um, uh, the brainstorming stuff, the brainstorming stuff is is really valuable. Okay, so there's two two things, right? Helping uh, outline uh, to to help you write a paper, mm -hmm. brainstorming and ideas. Give me another one. Um, again, when it like when I came to submitting my paper, um, I would put my paper into ChatGPT, put in the instructions, and put in the syllabus, and I'd have it grade it for me. Oh my goodness. See, that's, that's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So you put the rubric in, yep. right? You put the rubric in and your essay and said, how'd I do? Yep. And it would give me specific, um, it wasn't easy on me, which was nice because then I could fix it. It would give me specific ideas. And if it said, you know, you need to elaborate more here, I'd say, but like how, what am I missing in that part that I need to elaborate more on? How'd you do on those papers that you use it this way? Um, I got A's on all of my papers. Uh, so, all right. Is that cheating? Um, I don't think so. I think it's using your resources. I mean, it's just like asking someone else, hey, can you grade this paper for me? So it'd be like going to the writing center yeah. because I know at BYU-Idaho, they have a writing yes. center. They have, they've, it's a great school. Mm -hmm. It would be like going to the writing center, having someone review it, and but this way you can do it without walking out in the in the cold. Yeah, and it's not subjective. <laughs> or yeah, yeah, it's very yeah. It, it so it it's is it brutal to you sometimes? Is it mean? No, I ChatGPT. If you say anything like stupid, it's like, well, I don't like to be stupid, but <laughs> here's some funny things instead <laughs> okay so so it's pretty nice to you have you only used chat gpt or have you tried any of the other um generative AIs i've only used chat gpt i only know of chat gpt i know you you've mentioned a couple other ones but yeah i'm going to mention claude c-l-a-u-d-e and also um uh bard from bear uh from google um bard just got updated uh with jim and i a couple weeks ago uh, very, very cool. Both, both of those are really good um, as well. So now you got two other friends that you can ask. Yeah, two other I'll Gen have AIs. to start using them next semester. All right. So there's a downside to this, isn't there? Because if you go to the resource center at the school, either the the writing lab or uh, maybe it's a math lab or whatever, mm -hmm. aren't you missing out on that human interaction uh, with uh, with someone? 
Um, I could see how that could be a problem. But for me, I also took advantage of those resources as well. Okay. So you didn't just sit in your dorm room and, you know, huddle down and just say, Gen AI is my best friend now. No, <laughs> because again, no. okay. it's an AI. Like you need that human, um, you need human eyes on it to see, especially if you're writing like a personal narrative or something, you need someone okay. to like be able to feel those emotions that you're trying to get across. I, I, I like that. I like that. that. That very good answer. Okay. Next, any other any other things you use ChatGPT for? I, you told me one. Hopefully you'll bring it up. If not, I'll Oh no, up. I'm really excited for this next one. Um best for last. Um but I you would use it as a study buddy. Okay. All right. A study buddy. Explain that. Cuz when I think of study buddy in college, I wasn't thinking there was a lot of studying going on. <laughs> exactly. That's why you um use a computer instead of an actual human. <laughs> um, but no, so I was taking econ last semester, which is a pretty hard class. And they don't give you study guides for tests. I don't know if normal classes do that, but this class, we didn't have study guides. So I would have basically put in, they had like practice tests at the end of textbook chapters. So I would put that in and be like, hey, can you make a study guide or a test or a quiz based of, off of these ideas. And then it would grade me on it. That is pretty slick. So you were creating your own curriculum, right? Mm -hmm. You were creating your own tests so that you could practice tests before you went and took the test. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. So um, it's, it's really good for, digesting a large amount of information. Yeah. Helping you quiz you on things like that. That's and pretty good. It. Now, yeah. Now, Madeline, you also suffer from uh, severe dyslexia too. Mm -hmm. So Gen AI can really help you quite a bit um, in text to speech type things. Now, I know you have tools that you've used to listen to books and listen to curriculum did you find those useful in college or was there just too much that it, 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 you couldn't handle it? Um, the only time I used text to speech was in my online textbooks and okay. audiobooks with um, other things. But when it came to the AI, or I don't know, are those AI the text? -to -speech? Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. They're generative AI, text to speech, gen AI. Yeah. Yeah. So I would listen to those and read along at the same time because that's the best way I learn. Because if I just listen to it, I get distracted. So I have to pay attention yeah. while I'm doing it. Um, but sometimes concepts are even like, even if I listen to it, it's hard to understand sometimes. So I would put that in to ChatGPT and ask, hey, can you explain this a different way? Oh, I like that. That that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, because a textbook has a certain way of describing things. They may describe it several different ways, but it's still the voice of the author. Mm -hmm. uh, which, if you don't understand that voice, uh, it could be difficult. Yeah. Of uh, very very cool ideas on how to how to leverage ChatGPT. Did in what at the end of the semester? Did you wish that you knew at the beginning of the semester about using the tools? Um, I didn't start using it as a study buddy till, well, I did use it as a study buddy probably on my second econ test. And I did really well on that test. And the first test I didn't do too well on, I mean, relatively to the second one. And the last test I didn't use it on and I didn't get a good grade. So it was just interesting to see the difference. Um, you did that as an experiment, right? Oh, definitely. Because <laughs> <laughs> it does take time. You have to ask it certain questions until you get what you want. So it's not it, it's not as simple. It's not as simple. Just hey, dump this in. Give me a test to make me smarter. It's not that simple. Yeah, and I mean another way I would use it is if I didn't understand a word, I would ask it, "Hey, can you explain this simply?" And it just took a lot of time, but I, as I was doing that, I was learning how to use the tool and learning the content that I needed to. 
Uh, that that's cool. Now you you use another Gen AI, and you may not know it's a Gen AI. That's Grammarly. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Now Grammarly has Gen AI attached to it. Now, do you, did I get you that that version? I can't remember. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah. Have you found that useful as well, or did you not even consider it a Gen AI like ChatGPT? Uh, I didn't as much. I started using it probably on my last paper. Uh, like the highlighting thing. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, you can highlight it and say, hey, can you make this in a active voice instead of passive voice? Yeah. Or can you explain this? Um, you know, or does this even make sense? It'll tell you. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, I would use that um, more towards the end of my semester, using it as like, hey, does this even make sense? Like, is this descriptive enough? Because I think my last paper was a personal narrative. Hey, is this depicting a, a story? Like, do you see the storyline in this? And it would pick it out really well. Or not pick it out if it wasn't there. Or not, depending on how 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 good or how well you wrote yeah. it. Um, very, uh, very cool. So you, you actually used several Gen AIs this uh, semester. Do you feel... Do you feel like you're ahead of your classmates as far as using a tool like this? It sounds like you are, but towards the end of the semester, had they started picking it up and using it? They hadn't. And I would always be like, hey, you should just ask ChatGPT about it. And they're like, well, they didn't even have accounts. I mean. Shame on them. <laughs> I know. I do feel like I'm ahead. And I wish the university that I went to, and I believe most universities don't have this, would teach how to use these new AIs in your everyday life. Because, I mean, people in the industry use it, so they should teach us now on how to use it. Well, yeah, I you know this because I use ChatGPT every single day, yeah. and I use Claude. I interviewed Claude and Bard and ChatGPT. Um, they're up for another uh, another interview. They have some new updates, so I'm going to have to interview them again. <laughs> um, okay, so we talked about school. We talked about um, whether it's cheating or not, the ethics behind it. You don't feel a bad at all about using this tool. No, because it's you tool. don't feel like you ever cross the line using it. Or maybe there was something gray right on the verge. I don't Not think at so. all. I mean, my professors never mentioned anything about it um, with my papers or anything I submitted. Um, so I, I, it's a tool that I think we should all utilize. So, and it sounds like you did a good job on using it as a tool instead of having it plagiarize papers for mm -hmm. you. Huh? Well, that's good. Now, Talked about school. You use it in the social aspect too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh oh yeah. Okay. Explain. Because how can you use a Gen AI in the social world that uh, you're living at in college? Um, there was one situation I could think of where I didn't like the advice my roommates were giving, so I asked ChatGPT. So I needed to text a guy to tell him I didn't want to go on another date, basically. Okay, so do you think he's listening to this episode? If he is, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, it, it's fine. You let down some guy with chat. Chat GPT let him down is what you're saying. Well, okay, so chat GPT was very formal with its response. It was like, hello, sir. And I'm like, that's not what I want. So again, I took basic ideas that it gave me and then spit out something that was perfect. You didn't change the prompt because you can change the prompt and tell ChatGPT, hey, I want you to pretend like you're a college student. Pretend like you're a college uh, student, a girl letting down a guy, and it was still too formal? Um, I did say, like, make it less formal, dumb it down a little bit. I never, I've never used it. Dumb it that, down. <laughs> Wait, was he a Neanderthal that asked no. you out? Is that what you're saying? No, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you used it to help you. What did you, all right, so what was the difference between what your roommate said and what ChatGPT said? Oh, I can't, I have to remember. Um, basically, I took all of the ideas that they gave me and formulated something. So ChatGPT was like, unfortunately, I can't go on another date because 
you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm trying, I can't even think. Because that, that unibrow you have, I just don't, you know, like unibrows. Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, probably like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, I would use it. Nothing against people with unibrows. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think my daughter likes unibrows. That's no, all. Oh, I don't. <laughs> okay. There you go. Um, but yeah, I just, it's such a great tool to use in social situations that you're not sure about. And it can be somewhat impartial, right? Mm -hmm. Take some of the emotion out. Yeah. I, I got you. Okay. So Madeline, what are you going to do this next semester? What are you going to do different this next semester with uh, ChatGPT and Cloud and Grammarly and Bard? Well, I want to try the other AIs, like Cloud. Is that Cloud or? No, it's C L A U D E. It's by Anthropic. That's the name of the company. Okay. And you can upload PDF files and document files. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, that sounds like it would be a great tool to use for research. Um, oh, oh, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think utilizing more more AI um, resources because each one's a bit different. I'm assuming. Oh, they are. They are, and they have a different bias towards different things. Yeah, so maybe looking at all of the different types of AIs this next semester and utilizing it more. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna uh, buckle down on it. Mm -hmm. um, if people want to find out more about you and your um, journey with Gen AI, because obviously, if you're gonna podcast this next uh, year about uh, mindfulness and simple life, you're most definitely gonna be using uh, Gen AI and doing some things on that. Would is that a safe assumption? Oh yeah, to write video outlines and all that good stuff. Are you gonna Are you gonna podcast about using Gen AI? Do you think? Um, probably not at the moment. Maybe in the future. Well, you can always come back on this show and and tell us some of the things that uh, that you've done. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Great. All right. So, how do people find your podcast and, or your uh, your video channel? Um, my handle is at Mindful Maddie. Maddie is spelled M A D E I. So you can find me on Instagram and YouTube. Thank you for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you enjoyed our podcast, give it five stars on your favorite podcasting site or YouTube channel. You can find out more information about Embracing Digital Transformation at embracingdigital.org. Until next time, go out and embrace the digital revolution.